Walk us through what, what was the thinking, the, the factoring now you're looking at behind that cut in the forecast. Look, essentially, I think what we are watching is the uh, fiscal policy response. And uh, to the extent to which that has not been uh, coming through, we had to bring in the growth numbers lower. Uh, we think that the second half numbers uh, will be weaker because the fiscal policy response is not coming in through to support aggregate demand. And uh, also that, you know, the trailing data for the last three, four months has been constantly surprising us on the downside, implying that the uh, endogenous recovery that we would have expected after to reopening has also been weaker than expected. Why haven't they done more? Well, I think the challenge is that, you know, if you think, just, you know, take a step back, what's going on in China is the 3D challenges of debt demographics and disinflation. Mm. Uh, and the biggest one is uh, the debt problem right now. They have seen a debt build of about 30 percentage points since December 19. And then policymakers always, once they have a product, unproductive buildup of debt, gets, get conscious and pull back on that fiscal policy and uh, monetary policy. Because they worry that if they ease, they will reignite uh, that problem or build up of another round of unproductive debt. Uh, but what we have learned from the lessons of the past deleveraging episodes is that if your debt growth is decelerating in, at a pace that you have an aggregate demand problem and deflation problem, you do need to address that with, again, that same loose fiscal and monetary policy. And it's just a harder one for policymakers to, uh, you know, take the decision as to whether we should do the same thing back again. Mm -hmm. um, and and as, as an economist, I would say that, yes, you have to do the same thing back again, because if you don't solve your deflation problem, then any other problem will not get solved. And is it is it too late? To do that, or is, is that line in the sand still far away, that there is time to act before there this is mindset to act. sets in? Uh, so one of the important metrics we look at when you're trying to manage this debt deleveraging problem is the gap between real GDP growth and real interest rates. Now, at this point of time, for China, the gap is meaningfully positive, i.e. real GDP growth is higher than real interest rates. So they, at the starting point, they are still in a good position. Uh, but if they don't stimulate over the next uh, two, three quarters, then what you will see is growth will decelerate and your deflationary pressures will rise, which means that real rates will rise. And this gap, which is positive right now, will not be sustained. And once your real rates are higher than real GDP growth, then the problem will become even more difficult to manage. You, you guys have been laying out the scenarios of, of comparing Japan that lost decade and and what China is going through right now. What what are sort of the things that are the similarities and what are the differences? So the similarities are on the 3D dynamics. Yeah. They also had the same 3D problem of debt demographics and uh, deflationary pressures. Uh, and I think the differences are that China's asset bubble has not been as big as uh, Japan's. Um, China has also not taken up a big currency appreciation. And Japan's currency appreciated by 220% between 1985 and 1995. And the bigger challenge on the currency front in Japan's case was appreciation of currency after the bubble deflation. So, you know, five years into the problem of bubble deflating, they were still appreciating their currency. And you cannot solve your deflationary problem with an appreciating currency. So China has uh, had a stable currency in the last few years. And right now also we are seeing currency weakening rather than appreciating. So currency dynamic is uh, also very different. Uh, and I think the, the biggest difference is in the policy response at the starting point. China's real interest rates are below real GDP growth, as I was mentioning earlier. Yeah. And so I think that stands to their advantage to manage this better than what Japan did in 1990s. Uh, but jury is out in the sense that you have to still see that reflationary fiscal policy come through mm. to ensure that we don't get to that point where it becomes more difficult to manage this.